Okay, thank you um, everybody for joining us. Welcome to our first pre-law uh, cat chat edition. And I'm very happy that we're joined by Erica Miller, who is a 2019 Davidson graduate who is actually now in her second year of law school at UNC Chapel Hill. So Eric and I know each other from pre-law society. Um, and so Erica, it's great to see you. And I appreciate you taking the time to answer some questions about your experience preparing for the application process, um, your experience in law school, et cetera. Um, so I have some questions that I'd like to ask. And my first question really is, when did you decide to study law and why did you decide to study law? So I sort of decided I wanted to study law when I got to Davidson and figured out I was not a pre-med student. <laughs> I couldn't do that path. Um, I always, it's like, interested in the Constitution and loved like AP Gov. And so this, this sort of was the natural path for me to take. Um, what I'm doing now in law school is not what I originally thought I was going to do in law school. So I went to law school to do more of the regulatory, like policy type stuff. And that is not what I'm interested in now. Um, so my path has just sort of changed and altered, but I think I'm finally getting there. That's interesting that you mentioned that your path is changing in law school because I think that's something that people didn't think could happen. So what's your interest now? Um, so now I think that I just want to do more of like general practice, go back to my hometown, which is Lincoln, and maybe not start my own firm at first, but do smaller stuff. I originally thought that I really wanted to go into politics. I thought I really wanted to you know, work in Congress, writing legislation. Um, but with the polarization today, that just is not interesting me anymore. Okay. Um, after taking a few classes in law school, it's not what I thought it was. <laughs> it's a lot more rules and step-by-step like -step procedures that I was not prepared for. Mm -hmm. um, and I've really enjoyed my basic classes like contracts, wills and estates, trusts and estates, like those are what I found interesting. So that's sort of where I'm winding up. Okay, that's great. So what advice would you give to someone who's on the fence about whether or not to go to law school? Like they're thinking they might like to, they're not sure if they want to, like what suggestions would you offer? I would like definitely talk to lawyers. Um, I didn't really do that and I wish I had. Um, I think everybody has like a preconceived notion about what lawyers do because it's what we see on TV. But I would say that's only like maybe 5% of lawyers. Okay. Not what being a lawyer is. And really just like working in a law firm if you can, even if it's just like as an intern, you know, doing their secretary stuff, like getting inside a law firm and seeing what they do would be so beneficial to see if it's like the type of lifestyle and the type of culture that you want to be involved in. Um, they kind of joke at least at Chapel Hill, that there is like a lawyer's culture and like it's not really nine to five, it's like a nine to six or nine to seven and I was not prepared for that and I think that if I would have known that going in, like I could have mentally prepared a little bit better. <laughs> okay, all right. So it wouldn't necessarily have swayed you, it just would have have you be in a different frame of mind for thinking about this particular profession. Yes, and I think it would have helped me my first year, I took a lot of classes, which are beneficial because they're bar classes, but like I'm no longer going to use them because like I'm not going to do that type of law. So I think it would have helped for me to at least know going in what I'm sort of interested in so I could have taken more applicable classes. Okay. All right. So that is something that you hear about a lot is that, you know, a lot of students will say like, I'm not really sure what it is that I want to do as far as the type of law I want to practice. And what I'm hearing you say is that it's okay to not be 100% sure, but you, it's helpful to at least do some research because even just talking to a lawyer might help you rule some things out or rule some things in. Exactly. Like just talking to a lawyer, you can get the kind of vibe as to what the workload and just the whole like persona of that area of law is. So if you would have talked to a corporate lawyer, like my first interview with a corporate lawyer, I could tell immediately like these are very like strict rule following people they work all the time and then my first time talking to a wills and estates lawyer i could tell it was much more relaxed mm -hmm. sort of family oriented and that was sort of more what i was looking for yeah okay all right well that's helpful information when like where did you find people to talk to 
I opened up my, like I went to Google and found linkage and lawyers for my hometown and just mm-hmm. like called them up on the phone and just okay. asked if they had time that they could talk to me. Yeah. And then, um, I also did that at Davidson, but not quite as much, but there's like a lawyer on main street. His name is lost me right now, but like, he's super open to talking to students. He t- chatted with me, like even once I had left Davidson, mm-hmm. super helpful in that regard. Okay. All right. Great. And I think we found that, you know, there's, there's this great resource, um, Davidson Connect that is um, newly launched. That's a fantastic resource for connecting, you know, Davidson alums. And you're going to be part of that as a, as a practicing attorney someday who will definitely pay it forward like many uh, lawyers and practicing attorneys are in that particular resource right now. So, okay, that's great. So shifting a little bit to applications because we're in the fall and it's full-blown application season. Um, Many students are, you know, in the process of taking the LSAT or we are going to have students who in the next cycle will be taking the LSAT. Can you talk about how you prepared for the LSAT and what tips and strategies would you offer? So I just got like the Kaplan books to prepare. Um, I will tell you that in the problem solving, the puzzles section, there was one portion and my biggest tip that I tell everybody to this day is the book said like this, this specific type of puzzle has only been used in 5% of tests. Don't worry too much about it. And so like, I just didn't study it. And then I went to my LSAT and that was the puzzle I got. Of that, course it was. <laughs> it's so like my first piece of advice is practice every single type of puzzle there is, even if it is not likely to be on there because they do throw them up. Somebody has to get it eventually. Um, and then my second piece of advice for that that I wish I had done more is when you take the practice tests it's only the sections that are graded but in reality when you actually take the LSAT they throw in an ungraded section so that they can like figure out questions so just make your own practice tests that are truly the full length because it is a draining day and if you don't practice it like you burn out so easy okay all right it's kind of like training for a marathon like you have to prepare like if you only trained to run a half a marathon and then you try to run a full marathon, it's going to be tricky to do. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. Do you recall, like, um, so when did you take the LSAT and when prior to that, did you start like really preparing for it? I took mine, I think it was the September. Okay. Um, and so I used the summer before to study. <laughs> but I, think I really started prepping like end of July, early August. Okay. Yeah, I was never somebody that could do the full eight hour day. So I would put in three to four good hours of work and it took me a month. Okay. You know, some people can sit down and do it for nine hours and feel really good about it. And then wow. but I just like, I couldn't do it that way. Yeah. That's draining. I can understand. Okay. Um, did you take the LSAT only once or did you take it multiple times? I took the LSAT once. Um, I think I took it a little bit later. I took mm-hmm. my senior September. So if I had taken it another time, I would have had to have applied and then amended my application with a new score. Okay. And that just seemed like a really big hassle when my score was like, I was satisfied with it. Okay. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest thing is that if it's a score that works for the colleges that you're, for, that you're looking at, um, for the schools you're looking at, then I'd say that I think that that works. So, um, so about the application process. So do you recall approximately how many schools did you apply to? I was trying to do this earlier. I think I applied to about 12 schools. And the way that I did it was I did four schools that I was fairly confident that I could get into. I did five where my scores were right about their average. So it was sort of my, like my target schools. And then I think I applied to four reach schools. Okay. All right. And so that's a good mix. And that's kind of that, you know, that, that tiered system that, that we recommend. Now, were there any other criteria that you use to help determine, okay, of the schools that would be my safety schools, which ones am I interested in? Like, were there other criteria that you looked at um, for determining which schools to apply to besides like how your LSAT and GPA matched up? I did look at location. I know that Davidson is a small school and I had thought that for law school I wanted to get the big school experience um in my head I thought that the law school was like the undergraduate school if that makes sense even though I know that's not really the case 
Um, so I like I knew that I didn't want a small private law school, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so something different. Okay. So of the schools you applied to, how many were you admitted to? I think I ended up with about nine admissions. Um, okay. Not between. Like oddly enough, well not oddly, but the way that I didn't get into all five of my target schools, but did get into one or two of my reach schools. Interesting. We didn't fall like the four or five and then none. It was, it was like a mix of those two. Mm -hmm. um, but then when it came down to it, it was like the scholarship offers is what I ultimately ended up looking at. Okay. All right. So I think that answers my next question is how did you choose you know, the, the schools that you really wanted to consider and then ultimately the school that you, that you attended. Um, so is it that Chapel Hill offered like a, a really good scholarship financial aid package for you? They did. And then Chapel Hill was very willing. I like, didn't know this was a thing, but they were very willing to like negotiate that scholarship with me. Um, they let me submit in like, offers I've gotten from other places and they were like, we can match it and do this, which other people might know that you can do that, but I did not know that you could do that. Okay. Um, yeah. It was like a big, they were so helpful in the admissions process that I just knew that I would like be comfortable here. And okay. That's, that's cool to hear that. So that, you know, it, it, it sounds like you received an initial financial aid offer from them and then other schools that you had been admitted to, you received perhaps a better financial aid offer, and you were able to show that to Chapel Hill and basically say like, I'd really like to attend here, but this is really what's keeping me from doing it. And they kind of said like, okay, like we can match that because we really want you to attend here too. So that's awesome. Okay. Yeah. And then Chapel Hill, I don't know if other schools do this, but I'm sure they do. Like they allow you to renegotiate your scholarship even after your first year. So if your scores aren't as strong and they can't give you that offer, if at the end of your first year you prove like I got straight A's, I'm a great student, they will sit down and say, okay, well, here's what we can do this year for you, mm -hmm. uh, which was super helpful. Okay. That's good to know. It sounds like you were in communication with their admissions office. I was. Yeah. I think that's a big myth that, that sometimes uh, applicants will have is that there's this fear of like, oh, I, I can't call the admissions office because what if I ask a question and, and are they going to put that mark on my application? You know, like Erica asked this question, why would she ask this? And it's three strikes you're out on the questions, but you didn't find that. Did you? I mean, you found that the admissions office is like, they want to help you make the best decision. Yes. They were very helpful. Um, like invited me to come tour multiple times. Just do not be scared to talk to them because I probably blew their phone up. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. So, um, so maybe you've kind of already answered this, but are there any additional tips that, tips that you'd share about how to research schools or, you know, application process in general, like things you wish that you as an applicant had known? Yeah. So one thing that really comes to mind is I have heard, like people had told me this, but it's one of those things where I like didn't really pay attention to it until it happened to me. Like you always hear go to law school where you want to practice. And in my head, I was like, that don't really matter. Like, I can practice anywhere if I want to. Mm -hmm. um, but like I went for an interview for a summer internship in Texas and like they were really hammering it down. They're like, so why do you want to be in Texas? Like, you're not in law school in Texas. It's like, what draws you to Texas? Um, and so I feel like it would be, it would have been much more difficult to get a job if I did want to wind up in Texas there, mm -hmm. having gone to Chapel Hill than looking for a job in Raleigh like the geographical practice area, like really does make a difference. And I didn't take that into consideration. Okay. Which doesn't matter now because like, I want to be in North Carolina anyways, but right. And I wanted to get out that would have been beneficial to know. Mm -hmm. And then um, the other thing that was look at what the schools really focus on. Um, I thought that law was law and didn't really think that schools had like specialties and they don't have specialties, but like Chapel Hill, we are a big pro bono school. We are public, we're well, public. And so we like public interests, finding like, jobs like that is what our CDO is like really good at. Whereas there are some other schools in North Carolina who really focus on getting you to go corporate or environmental law, um, which you could still do at Chapel Hill, but it's just so much easier 
if you want to do public interest because that's where all of our networking and all of our connections are. Mm -hmm. Like okay. really researching the school and finding out what they claim to be. Like, okay. Okay. And I think I recall that when you and I were working together, like back to the geographic implications, like many of the schools that you were looking at were within like that Southeast region. Um, I mean, would you say that like the geographic connection, is it so like specific to like state or is it regional? I would say it's regional, um, but even like in the state helps. Okay. Yeah. Well, I've seen in interviews, like they love hiring people that they think are going to stay mm -hmm. in to the region. Okay. All right. I know, I don't know if um, the pandemic had any implications on this. Were you able to do some sort of summer experience um, in between your first and second year? I was, so I interned at the North Carolina Court of Appeals for the first half of my summer. And then at the second half of my summer, I was at the federal district court in Charlotte. So I did two judicial internships. Um, both were hybrid remote okay. the pandemic. Yeah. But I did. I stayed in North Carolina for both of mine. That's wonderful. And how did you find those particular experiences? I love them. Um, I actually found out that I got the second one, not because of, but in part of, because his current, like his legal aid, his current um, chamber's assistant, was a Davidson grad and so when they saw Davidson on the application they're like oh we, we love Davidson yeah um, which was super helpful and cool yeah that's awesome um how did you learn about them like did you did you see them advertise somewhere did you go through the career service office at the law school like how did that process work so the law school does this thing called OCIs um, I'm pretty sure every law school it's the way that they sort of hire you submit for an interview and if you make if they want to interview you, they come on campus and you interview with them instead of having to travel to mm -hmm. 15 different law firms they're all there in one day and you just schedule your interviews that great day. okay mm -hmm. okay all right so if we've got some first and second year some freshmen and sophomore students who are who are watching this and they're considering law like, what advice would you offer to them like i think you you've already mentioned you know having career conversations with people in law. I mean, are there other tips? Like what other advice do you wish you could have received when you were a first or second year student at Davidson? Um, so I would really suggest finding what you're interested in. Like you can say law as generally, yes, but just because you wanna to go to law school, you do not have to be a political science major. Like I was, and I don't know that it, it didn't hurt me at all, but I don't know that it has, benefited me, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd really suggest like finding what other topics outside of political science interest you. And I know that Davidson is really good about having all over the board types of classes. And I really wish that I would utilize that more. And like, I took one education class, but like, I wish I would have taken more and found out like, hey, education is really cool. Maybe I want to do education law or mm -hmm. um, just anything like that. I mean, energy, taking some environmental science classes and decided if I wanted to do environmental law because now I'm in the situation where I took a lot of political science classes and that was great but it didn't really help me find what niche of law that I wanted to go into because I came to law school and like didn't really know what I was interested in mm -hmm. I was interested in law but I didn't know where from there yeah okay all right um you decided to go straight to law school so you didn't take a bridge year, um, a gap year, as others would call it. Why did you decide to do that? Did you ever think about doing a bridge year? Like, walk me through that. So I had told myself I did take the later LSAT, and I told myself that if I didn't get a certain score, I was going to take the bridge year and try again. Um, just because I had a good GPA at Davidson, but not as good as like it was not comparable with the 4.0 that other people were probably sending in from other schools. Mm -hmm. um, so I knew that my LSAT had to be strong. Uh, but when I got my score and it was in the range that I needed it to be, I just like didn't have anything else I would have done during my gap year. Okay. But looking back, I think that could have even been beneficial there for me to have done a gap year in a law office, like clerking for just even a local lawyer from mm -hmm. back home just to 
get that kind of experience out of the way so that I wasn't having to do it while I'm in law school. Okay. Okay. How would you say that law school, like in your first year, is most different from your undergraduate experience? I think just the fact that I, I met my professors maybe two times total all last year. And in law school? Wow. Whereas Davidson, I was in my professor's offices all the time. They knew me by name. Mm -hmm. They were asking me how my day was. And at law school, I mean, you have 60 kids in a class. It's the size is tripled, first of all. And then second of all, like you don't turn in weekly assignments. So law school was your entire grade is your final exam, which I was not prepared for. I did not know that until I got here. Okay. But it, it's your, so you have really no way of your professors knowing how you're doing in the class or where you're struggling along the way. Like you really have to figure that out yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think that was the biggest difference for me from Davidson. Okay. So do they offer like office hours and you can go and see them and, you know, but it's just kind of, it's not as typically done as it is maybe at Davidson or. They do offer it and it's like highly encouraged. For me at Davidson, I would go to office hours after I got a paper back or after I got a test back and it sort of forced me to go talk it through yeah. where I, because I'm not somebody that will seek out a professor to just talk to them mm -hmm. how I am. Right. So it, like those markers along the way is what forced, I don't say forced, but created that connection with my professors here. Whereas in law school, I had nothing telling me like, you don't understand this. You need to go to office hours, um, which was the biggest one like I had to learn that I had to learn to like assess myself and figure out where I don't understand stuff mm -hmm. okay all right um looks like you're living in an apartment you're off campus now is that pretty typical for for law students does does UNC Chapel Hill have on-campus housing for law students or does everybody live off campus I think there's a few graduate housing dorms but I would say pretty much everybody lives off campus. Okay. My only like four minutes, so it's not. Yeah, not close to campus. Okay, all right. Um, what types of, if any, activities, clubs, organizations, or whatever, did you get involved in in your first year? Are there opportunities to do that? Yes. So I, <laughs> I took the approach that they tell you not to do it, David. It's not your first year. <laughs> or, a bunch of clubs and because I really didn't know what I wanted to do like when I got here I found out what I wanted to do was not actually what it was and I was just kind of lost so I signed up for like the education law society the transactional law society um and that was actually very helpful because really our clubs are just listservs and so you get invitations to speakers that are coming and you know the latest news on what's happening in that area of law um, so I did that my first year, sort of to try to find out what I liked in general. Mm -hmm. Also did this thing called enrichment groups, which I'm sure is not specific to Carolina, but it's basically like first year study groups that are forced with a 2L who has taken the class and did very well in it. Okay. Which like, I really suggest, you know, like if you're, when you go to Davidson, working in groups is like we did a I did it a lot and it was felt very isolating trying to do everything but on my own mm -hmm. but those study groups really helped me I don't know get some sort of comfort with how to study in law school okay all right that's great that's great to hear um were there particular um law related like resources or anything at Davidson programs events or anything that you had the opportunity to to participate in that you would recommend uh, Davidson pre-law students do the same? Um, when was the pre-law fair or the law school fair? Sorry, not the okay. fair. Um, I really wasn't going to go to that, but I went with, on a whim and it was like the best thing that I did to get ready for law school because A, you got to talk to a representative, which I don't know, just put a face to a name for me and was very helpful. And then B, I got so many fee waivers at the law school fair, which is actually why I applied to so many schools. Like I was originally, I had budgeted to apply to like maybe six. Mm -hmm. Going to the law school fair, 
just by talking to a table, they would say, well, here's an opportunity waiver. Thanks for stopping by. And that was so helpful. That's and, great. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, I think that that's something that um, people oftentimes don't realize like there's, there's all sorts of different fees whenever you are doing the application process. Like you have to, to pay for the LSAT and you have to pay for the, the application service. But additionally, like each school has their own application fee, which can be upwards of like 85 to hundred dollars. So times that by six, which is about the average that people will, um, number of schools people will apply to, um, those fee waivers can come in handy. So that's good to know. Um, and also on that same note, I, like reached out to the admissions office directly a couple times and sent them emails like, hey, I'm really interested in your school. I really want to apply, but like money is like these fees are expensive. Do you offer fee waivers? And I think I got two or three back just from sending emails to them, like asking. So it, like it can never hurt to just ask. Yeah, it doesn't hurt to ask. Okay, that's good to know. Um, and we are in a virtual world right now. And you know, so anybody watching just know that that law school fair is going to take place the first week in November when it usually does. It will be virtual this year. Um, and so more information to come about that. So I'm, I'm glad to hear that that was a, a good experience for you. So, um, Well, Erica, those are really the questions that I had. I appreciate you taking the time with me. Is there any, you know, kind of final thoughts that you'd like to offer to Davidson pre-law students? I would just like to tell them to like, take this time now to like learn how you study. Um, okay. I went through all of undergrad and I don't know how, but like never figured myself out on how I really needed to study. Okay. Uh, and so when I got to law school, it was, it was a lot of independent studying. So I had to learn, like, I need to regularly quiz myself. I need to hear stuff said out loud. Like I'm an auditory learner. Um, so if you can figure that out before you get here, it will be very helpful. <laughs> for okay. You. Yeah, that's good information. Thank you. Okay. Well, Erica, I appreciate you taking the time to talk with us today. Oh, thank you for having me. Thank you.